In this video, we're taking a look at how Calradia is doing after 100 years of in-game time. There were a lot of changes in the recent 1.8.0 patch, so we should see some interesting results. Let's dive right in. Let's first go over the testing parameters. We will sit our party off map so as to not influence anything. Death is enabled and difficulty is set to Bannerlord. We will run exactly five years at a time and follow up on a few variables. How long our six caravans can last, how our six workshops are doing over time, how many nobles have died died since the start and how the map has changed and go. It's 1890, five years in, and already we've lost two of our caravans. All of our workshops are set to breweries and are producing around the 100 to 140 dinar range. Not spectacular, but also not awful. I set Renown to 10k, which puts us at clan tier 6, so every king in the land wants us to join them, apparently. It doesn't look like any of the fiefs have changed hands yet, or at least if they did, they lost it back to the original owner by the five-year mark. Roughly 22 nobles are now dead, and the game starts off with seven dead, so about 15 died or three per year. Let's continue onward. All right, we're 10 years past the start and roughly 41 nobles are now dead or 3.4 per year. One of our companions was among the dead, a caravan leader, which takes our total down to three. The workshops are all over the place with some giving nearly 200 and a few close to zero. Wars seem to be a leading cause of inefficiency as resources can't be traded as freely and sieges drain the town. At first, it seems like not much has changed, but taking a closer look at Batania will convince us otherwise. This reminds me of the Great Partition of Poland, everyone taking a chunk. Sturgia has taken Flintog Castle, Pendrake, and Seanon. Vlandia has taken Neviansk from Sturgia, Drummer Castle, Astor, and Lanukhan, Abkhmer Castle, and Marna from Batania, holy smokes. The Northern Empire has taken Uthalem Castle and Remtoil from Batania, and poor Batania is left with only two towns both of which are currently under siege. At 15 years in, 58 nobles are dead or 3.4 per year again. We still have three caravans running and pulling between 350 to 600 per day. The workshops are inching their way up with the top one producing 238 per day and half of them are at least above 200. Looking at the map, it seems Kazates have struck out and conquered lands from the Northern Empire. Epinosa and Siratos Castle both changed hands. While Monchog was busy, both Tile and Uruksgala Castle have been taken from Sturgia as well adding four fiefs to their holdings. Fortunately, Sturgia has held the rest of their lands. Most campaigns, they get stomped first, so it's nice to see them still on the map. Wow, Sturgia actually took Dunglanus from Batania and Vlandia took Carbanseth removing Batania from the map. They still have nobles alive, however, so we will see if they pop up elsewhere. One interesting thing to note here, Remtoil has been taken by Kazate, who doesn't own a fief anywhere near this side of the map. I wonder if they recruited a noble with that fief or if they traveled all that way down to siege it. The Northern Empire has ceded land to the Western Empire and has only a few fiefs left. Asarai has begun their incursions into the mainland, taking Garantor from the Western Empire. If you were hoping for more action in 1.8.0, then you won't be disappointed. 11 4, it's now 20 years in and 90 nobles have passed away, which is 4.15 per year, a decent increase from the previous. Some of this may be due to wars, some because more nobles are getting older. We lost another companion, now down to only 7. Another caravan was lost and that companion died with it. Looking at the workshops, we see a sizable gain. Only one is producing 0, most likely from being sieged down, while most others are between 300 and 370. Not bad at all. The Southern Empire has taken Husen Folk from Asarai and Odrissa Castle from the Kazate. Gone are the days of Kazate dominating everyone. Well, let's walk that previous comment back some. They have taken Emprella and Lokana Castle from the Northern Empire and still hold castles they previously took. They also took Atrian Castle to the west. Let's not forget Vladiv Castle too. Sturgia continues to lose land to its neighbors. They lost Dunglanus to Vlandia and it seems Vlandia is almost done conquering all of Batania's lands. Vlandia seems to be dominating the area taking Garantor Castle and two from the Asarai. Now let's see if they can hold everything together. The Northern Empire has only a single fief left. Argaron. A quarter of a century on, and 165 nobles have bit the dust, which equates to 6.32 per year. The death rate is increasing at an exponential rate at this point. We lost another companion and are down to six total. A single caravan is left 25 years into the test. Sayanon continues to be a problem, producing nothing. 
three workshops are producing over 400, one at 275, and one just over 100. This is a great example of how widely workshops can fluctuate in a campaign. Nothing has changed in the southeast with Kazate and the southern empire holding their gains. Kazate has taken both Mysia from the empire and Sabir from Sturgia. It's sad to see Sturgia struggle, but at least they made gains to the west. Okay, scratch that. They lost Sena to the western empire. Vlandia is continuing to consolidate its holdings in the area, only needing three fiefs to have all of Batania. The northern empire have migrated from Argoron to Epicrodia, now being their only holdings left. The death toll rises to 223, 30 years in, or 7.2 nobles per year. There were no changes to our companions or caravans, and the workshops are struggling some. All are now producing, but most have had their income cut in half. Asurai has reconquered Tubilis Castle back from Vlandia, and things are mostly the same in the east, although Kazate lost Mysia to the southern empire. While they went all the way to Diathma for conquest, and the Western Empire has begun to encroach on Vlandia and Batania, now holding Sanon, Remtoil, and Maranath. The Northern Empire no longer own any fiefs now. It's nice to see someone holding against Vlandia. It's interesting to note, Western and Southern Empires have had the same borders for many years now, and I'm not sure why these lands have not changed hands. It's 1119, or 35 years in, and 269 nobles are dead. The yearly death rate has slowed its acceleration at 7.49 per year now. We lost two more companions to old age and have only four left. Our solo caravan is still growing strong though. It seems the workshops have mostly recovered with four producing above 300 now. Marinoth and Sanon are experiencing some issues, which is understandable given the instability in the area. While Vlandia is going to town, they took Kuyas and two castles. Not only that, but Batania has risen from the ashes and snatched Einbalik Castle from Asarai. Talk about drama! The Southern Empire has consolidated the area, taking Shabal Zimmer Castle from the Asarai. The Southern strikes again, taking Odok from the Kazates. For now, the Kazates have held their conquest in the north, but Sturgia continues to hemorrhage land. The south took Sabir and Vladiv Castle, but are badly isolated in that area now. More drama in the west. Marnal switches from the Empire to Vlandia, and Batania takes their homelands back in Uthalem Castle. Could this be the second coming of Batania? At this point, I'm overcounting every dead noble, so I will be estimating it. It's roughly 300 for now, which is 7.5 per year. I also forgot to switch on the ages, but we see a few people living into their 90s, and most dying off in their 70s and 80s. We could make an actuarial table with this if we wanted to. Calradia life insurance, anyone? No changes in companions, and still a solo caravan run 40 years on. We did manage to lose a workshop, one of the Batania ones. I suspect a rebellion caused it. Some workshops are earning 500 to 550 per day. Inflation is real. However, troop wages do not increase, so the longer the game goes on, the easier it should be to pay for troops. How sad. Vlandia took Batania's castle in Einbalik. Southern Empire continues to push into Asarai, taking Tamna Castle. Kazaid has been surprisingly stable and not much changing in the north. Oh wow. It seems Batania needs to be renamed to the Balkans of Calradia. Dunglanus and Maranath have rebelled from Vlandia and the Western Empire took Varcheg from Sturgia. Poros has actually changed hands. I had to go back and make sure, but the Southern Empire took it from the Western Empire. So they do still squabble, it seems. We are now 45 years in, and a staggering 420 nobles have died. At 9.33 deaths per year, the pace is certainly increasing. Sadly, all of our companions have died of old age, and we no longer have any caravans active. The party still exists, however, so we could replace the leader without having to cough up 15,000 dinars. I'm really impressed by this change. This means we can only lose caravans by violent capture. Asarai has reconquered all of their lands in the west back from Vlandia, but Razik and Sahe Castle were ceded to the southern empire. Kazate remains stable, but Sturgia manages a resurgence, taking back Sibir from the empire. The western empire continues to push into the Calradian Balkans, now owning three of the major towns and many castles. Uh, okay, so Asarai now owns Turby Castle? I'm starting to think these isolated fiefs are coming from a recruitment and not conquest. That would be a very unlikely siege. Asarai is now encroaching on Vlandia, taking Garantor Castle. I've given up counting the dead and will do it at the 75 and 100 year mark. Don't hate me please. All workshops are producing in the 300 range with one above 400. There were no changes in Asarai and Kazate lands. Vladiv is owned by Vlandia somehow. Sabir was taken by the Southern Empire. Rebellions are picking up steam with Omor and Dunglanus rebelling. Varchek goes to the Asarai and Sturgia have only a few fiefs left. Turby goes back to Vlandia. Now that makes sense. Our workshops are really doing well this time. Everything is producing 350 or more. This span of time was quite stable and everything in the south and east 
staying the same. In the north, the southern empire has all but kicked Sturgia out, leaving them with only Av Castle, which is under siege at the moment. Omor is picked up by Vlandia. Baranoth rebels once more, but not much else going on. Another five years and most workshops are producing close to 400 and above. Wow. Once again, the south and west are unchanged, but lots going on in the north. Varnovapol is taken by Kazate, and Sturgia regains Bulgard. The western empire has made big gains in the area, evicting everyone from the previously Sturgian holdings. Another rebellion in the Balkans. Not surprising. We're now 65 years in, and Sturgia has officially been booted from fief ownership. Even Asteri has gotten in on the action, taking Tekor Castle. The Balkans are evenly divided between Vlandia and the Western Empire now, but who knows for how long that'll last. 1159, 70 years in, and the first kingdom to disappear is Batania. A moment of silence, please. Okay, we got a lot going on this time. Vlandia made some progress into Asteri again, but lost Kuyaz to rebellion. The Southern Empire take more clay from Kazait, going as far as Hakun Castle. Baltikan rebels somehow. I wonder if someone conquered it and then lost it back because it's unusual if not impossible for a same culture fief to rebel. Sturgia surges back taking three fiefs, but all of which are currently under siege. These guys can't catch a break, can they? Following tradition, Karbansith has... Yeah, you guessed it. Rebelled. Three quarters of a century have now gone by. Roughly 840 nobles have died, or 11.8 per year. The workshops are performing about the same. The Southern Empire has taken Kuyas from the rebels. They also took Ayakis and Jamaya Castle from Asarai. Sahil Castle somehow flips to the Western Empire. Look at this little vultures. The Northern Empire swooped in to take Baltican from the rebels. I guess they have a home once more. For Novopol is lost to rebels, the Western Empire are looking incredibly strong at this campaign stretching the full length of the map now. They even take most of the Balkans from Rebels and Vlandia. Okay, we're going to speed things up to finish this off quickly, but I wanted to highlight a few things. Sturgia clawed their way back to own Balgard, Revel, and Ustakol Castle once more. Both Empire Kingdoms are fighting over Sturgian lands in the north, and more rebellions in the Balkans. Another five years go by, Sturgia begins to consolidate their previous holdings, now owning six fiefs. I'm a sucker for a good comeback. 90 years in, and the workshops are going nuts. The best one is producing over 650 per day. Wow. Sturgia is struggling to hold and Kazate takes Ustakol Castle. I'm convinced it has to be a recruited noble. There's no way they would cross that far to take it by force. Ostakin is owned by the Empire now? I'm so confused. At last, the year is 1184. It's been 100 years, and Calradia is unrecognizable now. For dead nobles, I have it estimated at over 1200, but it might be off by a lot because my method was quite janky. But if it holds true, the death rate for 100 years would be 12 per year, which is fourfold increase from the start. Workshops are producing anywhere from 350 to 550, which is a respectable range. Granted, we only tested breweries this time, and it would be interesting to see how other workshops would hold up over 100 years. Asarai have started to take back their homelands, but have a few more to go. Kazate have lost roughly half of their starting fiefs, but held much of the Sturgian and Empire lands that were conquered. The north is a mess, with four kingdoms claiming lands up there, none of which are Sturgia. The western half of the map is dominated by Vlandia and the Western Empire, and no rebellions are currently present. All in all, I think 1.8.0 patch is performing really well in regards to a dynamic balance of power. Aside from a few spots, there was no real snowball or complete domination by any one kingdom. On the flip side, plenty of fiefs changed hands over time, creating a map that never seems stagnant or boring. Workshops showed once again how fickle they can be. Wars are not only expensive in terms of troops, but also for an economy. Nobles were dying off in an increasing but sustainable rate each year. I didn't show it, but I did check current living nobles near the end, and the number was slowly increasing or staying flat. As for caravans, there isn't much I can say because my data set was tiny. However, I did see some caravans earning upwards of 2,000 dinars per day, so at least they have the potential to earn a lot. They do die off quickly though, so it's still a risky venture. Enjoy the rest of the time lapse, destroy that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.